If you are a wood carver, there is one skill that you will want to have, and that is being able to carve fine details. And this is what this video is all about. I am going to teach you how to carve fine details, or rather, how to approach carving fine details. This video, I believe, will be very, very super helpful to you in your journey in power carving, whether you are an experienced power carver or a new one. There is something here that we can all learn from. Let's get to it. The first thing that we need to do is to pick our burr or bit. Now this is a huge topic and I'm not going to show you every single burr and bit because I don't have every single burr and bit, but I am going to show you the ones that I use that gives me good success. Let me show you. Here is the container I keep my fine detail burrs in and I suggest you do the same to keep them separate from your other burrs. Let's take a look at them. The first one that I use is the round carbide burr. The head on this burr makes it perfect for getting into the tight and hard to reach areas. Watch this, I have all of these in different sizes. That way I can make sure that I have the right burr for the right job. And the next burr, which is my absolute favorite, is the inverted cone burr. You see the shape of this? This allows you to turn it on its side and get straight lines and carve straight lines. You guys need this if you are going to be doing any type of power carving. I do need to note that these are diamond burrs, meaning they don't cut like traditional carbide burrs. They do more of grinding than they do cutting, but these work perfect for every single project that I've ever had. Now there's other companies that make these, such as Durigrit, you can see right there, and they have a patented technology where they actually have pieces of carbide welded to the end of the head here, which is pretty cool. I use both of these burrs about every single time I carve. And just like the round carbide burrs, you can see that I have different sizes for different jobs. The other detail burrs I use are these conical tip burrs from Duragrit. These are perfect for getting into the hard to reach spots and just sanding away all the nasty lines and stuff that the round carbide burrs leave behind. And for most of my carvings, I do the fine detail work with these three burrs and they serve me just fine. In order to carve fine details, we need to be able to see. So I use tools like this. This is a pair of magnifying sungla sunglasses, uh, magnifying glasses, excuse me. So you can see right here that I have this little eye piece. I'm gonna take this out and I have about four more of these. So I can change the actual magnification of this, but this really isn't my favorite method because I have to get really close to what I'm doing in order to carve it. And I have a bunch of dust and kickback, which I don't like. Let me show you what I normally use. This magnifying lamp right here. You can see the switch. You can just turn the light on that way. And it has, see the lights on the bottom of it. I'm blind you there. And oh, I can't forget my sticker I put on here. But you just open this flap up and what you see is a magnifying glass. So what I can do here is just move around the adjustable arm and I have little knobs right here to loosen everything up. That way I can maneuver the head where I need it to be. So I'm gonna get in place where I need to be and turn the light on. So as I look through here, every single detail is magnified and I can see exactly where I need to carve. Let me show you. Okay, you can see my image right through the magnifying glass here. Now let me remove this. See that? I'm putting back, see the difference there? That is amazing. Absolutely love that. So now I can take my tool of choice and just go right along here and carve. Look how easy this is. I'm just tracing the outlines, guys. This is like coloring, but with a tool. If I were to do something different when I first started power carving, it would be this. Simply get some wood carving stencils. After I started using stencils, my skills started maturing and I started learning so fast because I had an end goal in mind. And this is why I created this resource for you guys. 
Here is a Spartan helmet pack that I put together. This is $12 on howtowoodcarve.com. A fantastic deal for what you get. You can take these, print them out to any size, and they give you a reference point to work on. So you can get, I have this one and this one right here. This is the Wipe Your Paws bundle behind here. It comes, if you caught my other videos, you probably saw this stencil right here, but I am getting a lot of great feedback. And I always tell people, invest in yourself. In fact, I invest so much in myself, my present has to let me go to my future. I know where I'm headed. So anyway, I just wanted to give you guys an option that's there. If you need something to carve, go pick some up, invest in yourself. You can carve fine detail with any type of rotary tool. For a general rule of thumb, you will usually want to go to your highest RPM to do fine detail work because the faster that that burr or bit is spinning, the more smoother that you can get the cuts. Now, depending on the type of wood that you are using or the type of burr that you are using, you may not be able to carve at a high RPM, but I usually try to carve at the highest that I can go. I'm going to demonstrate the Marathon 3 micro motor and give you guys an exercise that you need to carve. Now, just one look at this thing, you can tell that this looks different than a normal Dremel with a flex shaft. I mean, just look at the differences here. A traditional Dremel with a flex shaft, this just goes up into the motor, and whereas you just take this flex shaft and carve. Well, on this unit, the motor is built into the handpiece, so it provides a smoother experience. And the reason I'm telling you guys is, is that most of my detail work, I usually go to smoother cutting units like this. Now, does this have the torque and the cutting power of my Dremel 3000 with a flex shaft? Nope. I just use this primarily for small cutting jobs and just fine detail work that doesn't require a lot of pressure. So I found this Marathon 3 fantastic, and you know what? I'm gonna give you guys a secret. You can pick this thing up on eBay for around 63 to 64 bucks at the time. On Amazon, they're a little bit higher, but I will link everything below. I highly recommend this, and it's cheap enough. If something goes out on this, I can just get a replacement handpiece. Okay, we have this piece of basswood you saw earlier with a magnifying glass. I'm going to teach you guys how to draw a flourish and carve it with a round carbide burr. So this is something that you want to practice. You may want to practice your drawing skills on a piece of paper first before we move to this, but uh, grab you a piece of basswood. This is super easy to carve. If you are a beginner, get you some of this stuff. It's super cheap and you can carve on it forever. So let me show you how to do this. So I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to give myself a reference point, a place to carve in. There we go. Now here is how you draw this flourish. So basically the flourish design that I'm doing is what I did right up here. So you wanna start right here by making almost like a circle, coming down and making an S. And off here you wanna make another S. You see how I'm curving this? And the pattern repeats. Just like that. Not perfect, but do you guys see the pattern on this? We're gonna take the round carbide burr, and this is the great thing about this micro motor. I can just open this up, stick one in, and lock it back. So we're gonna take this, and I'm gonna carve right along here. I did exaggerate this design to be a little bit bigger, that way the camera could pick it up. Now, in actuality, I would be carving something this small but I'm just doing this for the sake of the camera. So we're gonna turn this on and just very, with a light hand, just trace the pencil marks. Don't carve too hard, just let the bird do the work for you. Okay, now that turned out pretty nice, but we want to go back over that one more time to smooth everything out, okay? Okay, that's a little sloppy because I have the big camera in my way, but it's all right. Listen to the secret I'm about to share. After this part, take you a little piece of sandpaper, sand the top of it. And this will clean up all the fuzzies and everything else. And looky there, let me get this little tap. 
Also, get your little nylon brush, and this will help get everything out. This is brass, but this is what I had laying around. Okay, that turned out pretty nice. Now, if you're seeing some divots in here, that is perfectly normal with a round carbide burr. You want to go back over this again real lightly to get that out and take a little piece of sandpaper and just kind of sand inside as much as you can. I cannot stress this exercise enough, guys. Be sure to carve some flourishes like this. Over time, your hand, brain, and eye coordination are all working together, getting in sync, and it's teaching you how to carve. Is it simple? Yes, but this simple little exercise has a huge, profound effect, so do not neglect it. I literally have too much fun carving. I seriously try to carve anything I can get my hands on. It's like an obsession of mine. And I want to give you new power carvers some advice, even if you are an intermediate power carver. You have no idea what is on the other side of your decision to say yes. What do I mean by that? I had no idea that I would be doing this, that I'd have my big fancy light here and doing YouTube videos teaching you guys. I've had so much adventure through this and the best part about it, I met so many great and fascinating people. I have so many meaningful relationships with uh, all of you here on YouTube. It's like amazing for me. So I just wanna encourage you guys, do something new today. I know you guys are watching me and having fun, and but I wanna tell you something. Get off the video, no, like it first, be sure you like and subscribe, get off the video and start carving. Save up a little bit, what's a little bit of money to, to save up and to getting to something that you're gonna do the rest of your life or have a tool that you'll have the rest of your life. It's, it's a little bit in the small grand scheme of things, so I just wanna encourage you, go out there and be creative. You have no idea where it's gonna take you. Be sure to pick up your wood carving templates at howtowoodcarve.com, jumpstart that creativity, get you an end goal in mind. I appreciate you guys. I will see you on the next video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below if this video helped you. I'll see you next time.